What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV, back at it again with another one. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. Now, we just got done with a big weekend of women's hoops, man. We saw South Carolina dominate UConn. We saw LSU put the beat in the beats on Alabama as well. And I'm looking at it, and two bench players that are coming to mind that might be shifting up the starting lineups for their respective squads. Ashlyn Watkins has been sensational for two games without Camila Cardoso in the lineup. Can Don Staley actually keep her off the floor? She might be too good, man. I'm just saying, she looking like she pushing for a starting spot. Then on the other side, did Haley Van Lip lose her starting spot to a freshman? Last tear, Poa anchoring that point guard position, making her presence felt for them Bayou Bengals. But before we get into all that, make sure y'all join the memberships for all the greatest and the latest. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. And make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Brandon, hey, come on. When I say we were going to play no games today, we weren't playing no games. We came out hot. But, Coach, listen, we got a whole other second half to play. Girls, let's get fired up. Let's go ahead and close this thing out. Coach, when I say I love you, I love you. South Carolina defended their home court against Gina Ariyama and those UConn Huskies almost beat them by 20. And we just saw the Phoenix, the rise, the stardom, the super stardom of Ashlyn Watkins, man, on both sides of the basketball. We've seen it in flashes. We've seen her being able to come off the bench and block all types of shots. She's dunking the basketball. We know she's an athlete and just one of the most athletic players to come through South Carolina. But with her presence on both sides of the floor, being an elite shot blocker, showing that she can hit the mid-range, she's finishing in transition, finishing amongst the trees, taking on contact, using that frame, she's physical, and we're just witnessing something special. Now, it felt like we were getting a preview of the future of South Carolina. I mean, we're looking at it like, could this team be even better next year? But now with the way Ashlyn Watkins is playing, do you mess with that? Can you have her on the bench now? With the production and with just the plays, the playmaking ability that we've seen, just highlight, she's a walking highlight reel, just spectacular. She's a show. She's a one-player show. Now, can you put her back on the bench, respectfully? Ashlyn is, Ashlyn is impressive, like super impressive. Um, And I think with her having more responsibility, she's thriving in it on both sides of the floor. Like, she talks. Like, I can hear her talk and quarterback our defense. She's pushing Breezy out because Breezy's stuck on the screen. Like, you know, it's beautiful. It's, it really is. Like, I'm, I'm super proud of her because um, she, she wasn't a starter, and I know she wanted to start. And it didn't, it didn't, it bothered her to a, to the, to a point of actually showing me what I, what we're missing out on with her not starting. And I don't want to start like any, you know, any friction, but we have to have Ashlyn on the floor. We have to have her on the floor. It, when Camilla comes back, whether she she stays in the starting lineup or she comes off the bench, we have to have her on the floor. She's proven that. Like she's grown from from Camilla's absence. I'm just saying Coach Staley might have a problem on her hands. It's an embarrassment of riches going on right now in South Carolina, man. That front court is sensational. And we didn't even, you know what I'm saying? You still have Fagan, who's been very impressive in her time, getting more minutes with Cardoso out. Ashlyn Watkins has been sensational. But Chloe Kitts has been just as spectacular. So it's like, who do you move out of that front court to make more minutes for Watkins? 
aka Swatkins, because she's out there blocking everything. It's an embarrassment of riches. I mean, she would probably be the best player on majority of the teams right now, and she's the sixth woman for South Carolina. We saw Camila Cardoso wait, wait her turn, one sixth woman of the year in the SEC, and now we see what she's doing. But Watkins is just so far ahead of schedule, y'all. And I mean, the length, the mobility, she's so agile. The offense is really coming along, man. She's really expanding her arsenal on the offensive side of the basketball. And if she's knocking down that midi consistently, she's out here getting chased down blocks. Like, we're seeing the full package. Ashlyn Watkins say she got now. She is ready. And it just poses the question, can you insert her in the starting lineup? Who do you move? Do you move kids out of the starting lineup? She's been very good as well, very productive, done everything she's asked and more, been a, a reliable offensive threat, and one of the main reasons why they won these two games without Camila Cardoso. And then you got Cardoso coming back who's, you know, she's got pro tape, she's got college tape. We know what she brings to the table. She's the leading scorer, leading rebounder, leading shot blocker, elite. You know what I'm saying? She's just incredible. Going to be a heck of a pro at the next level. And I think, honestly, with her game, we're still seeing her just scratch the surface. When she gets a go-to move, it's over with. This is a very good problem to have for South Carolina, though. But what do you do, people? Like, it's, it's, it's an embarrassment of riches. And I just, I don't know if they're at a point where they can keep Ashlyn Watkins on the bench. Y'all heard Coach Staley. Whatever it is, if she's starting or coming off the bench, she has proven that she deserves to play. And that's what we're seeing right now, man. It's incredible. And it's I'm wondering if we're going to see a shakeup in that starting lineup, you know? Speaking of shakeups in the starting lineup, did we see, we saw LSU... You know, it was a tight game at first, but we saw how this offense looked when Haley Van Lift was running the point guard position. And then when she got substituted out because the offense went stagnant, and last year Poa got in there, and everything started flowing like a high-octane machine. They went on a big run, blew the doors off Alabama, and never looked back as soon as Poa came into the game. And we've seen that in multiple games now. We've seen her have more upside on defense. The scoring wasn't always there, but the defense ability, now she's taking leadership. You know what I'm saying? There was times where they were kind of razzled, and she takes the ball up top, settles everything down, gets LSU into their sets. As a freshman, that's something that we're not seeing from Haley Van Lift, who came to play the point guard position here. And we saw her lose a lot of minutes to last year Poe in that last game. And Poa had a heck of a game, man. This was probably her best game of the year, finishing with 11 points, 4 assists, 6 rebounds, pacing LSU, man, with the assist. Angel Reese had 6 as well, but as far as the guards, you know what I'm saying, Poa uh, pushing the pace, and she played 30 minutes compared to Haley Van Lift's 20, who struggled in this game. 6 points, 1 rebound, like she, her shot wasn't falling like that. Um, there just wasn't a lot of flow within the offense when she was running the show. We got to be honest. They put in Poa. She had the sick behind the back pass to Flaugé Johnson that just blew the roof off the arena in there in LSU, man. She was doing a good job of in the pick and roll, getting Angel Reese the basketball. Reese finishes with 27 and 19. Oh, my goodness, and six assists. And I told y'all it would make more sense for them to run her more at that point forward position and run the offense through her more because of her passing ability, man. And we see that it's paid off. Um, but it's looking like LSU has found their point guard in last year poll. It feels like uh, this could be a shift where she's entered in the starting lineup. And this is just kind of groundbreaking it feels like I mean there was so much hype around Haley Van Lift when she transferred to LSU um going off of what she did at Louisville at Louisville man where I mean you know we saw her average 19 points a game we saw her being one of the most competitive electrifying guards in the nation for the last three years just a dog you know what I'm saying and it's been an experiment at LSU. There's still a lot of season left. There's been some ups, 
We've seen her play some really good games. We've seen her score the basketball. We've seen her right now averaging a career high in assists. We've seen flashes. You know, it's been steady improvement. But the last couple games, it seems like it's kind of been some backtracking, some regression. And with that, we've seen the arrival of Poa, who feels like, I mean, she's just, it's not even a feeling. It's just, it is what it is. She's more of a true point guard, a pass first, um, playmaking, initiate, set up the offense, a coach on the floor type deal. She's that type of player, and it seems like she's just a better fit for the floor of this offense. They have enough scores. They really just need somebody to play the quarterback position and dish out the rock to these scores and let them work. I mean, when you got Michaela Williams, Flage, uh, Anissa Moro, Angel Reese, when you got players like these that can really fill up the basket and score the basketball, you don't really need another guard that's going to be out there that's, you know, shot heavy. You need another guard that's going to come out there and initiate the offense and complement those pieces. Feels like right now, last year Poa is complimenting her game, is complimenting the LSU offense more. Her skill set is bringing more value right now. And I mean, you know, we saw it, and it seems like this could be the move going forward, maybe. Um, Poa is, uh, she, she, I want her to be louder. I want her to run the show when she's out there, and uh, she doesn't, she's just not going to do that. She's kind of quiet. Uh, but those those skills are there. Um, I kind of saw that back behind the back pass come, and she's been waiting to do that. I don't remember saying that to her in Columbia, but I trust that I did. Um, we got spanked in Columbia last year, didn't we? But we got better, didn't we? And we ended up winning a championship. So uh, games like today will help us get better. Uh, but I do want to compliment Alabama. I'm telling you, that team is playing very good basketball right now. And they don't need to get deflated. Um, we just I'm just saying, man, I don't know what it is. It's just the point guard position is one of the toughest. It's probably the toughest in basketball. You're in a new system. You know what I'm saying? It's not like Haley Van Lith. She's an upperclassman, but she hasn't been in this system. Her and Poa have the same experience in this system. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it just seems like her Poa's skill set is just more fit to succeed with this team. And maybe you bring Haley Van Lith off the bench, which a lot of you have been saying in the comments. Maybe you bring her off the bench, and she provides that scoring punch. Now, I know she came there to learn how to run a team and to harness that skill for the next level and to up her draft stock. Um, you know, she's talked about wanting to be challenged and coming into LSU to compete, and now she's finding herself really competing for not only minutes, but for that starting spot, it feels like. Because, man, I just don't know if you can revert back. I mean, they were in danger of potentially losing this game. Poa comes in and completely changes the trajectory of this offense, steals the momentum. Um, she's a playmaker, and she's now scoring the basketball. That was something that we weren't seeing her really do. It seemed like she didn't really have confidence in her scoring the last few games, but we've seen that she can score the basketball. She is a scoring threat, and, you know, she can keep the defenses honest if they don't respect her. So, I think this is big, though. It's a big, this is a major, major development, y'all. This is a major development, and I think it will be something to keep an eye on moving forward, how both of these lineups are uh, are impacted, to be honest with you. We're talking about two of the best teams in the nation, um, a lot of new faces, a lot of, you know, players that were on the team last year stepping into bigger roles. And, on, you know, there's some transfers that are taking on some major roles, too. And some freshmen that have come in and are making some noise. You know what I'm saying? But it just might be time for a switch. Especially in LSU's case, it might be time for that switch. We've seen Haley Van Lift do her thing um, through a bulk of the season. You know, she's been at the point guard position. And like we said, there's been some ups. There's been some downs. And it's expected to be some growing pains when you're in a new system like this. That's expected. This is not a knock on Haley Van Lith. I'm a big fan of her game, and I think she's super talented. And I think that when she's on and playing her game, this team is on a different tier. She's definitely a big X factor for this squad, and I think she's going to be big for their success, pivotal in the NCAA tournament. But it could just be in a bench role, you know, more so focused on her scoring, you know. 
I'm just saying, man. We saw the trajectory. We saw the difference. Yeah, man, Poe was like a breath of fresh air for that LSU offense, man. And they looked good. They were rolling. Uh, the chemistry, the assists, moving the basketball. I mean, it looked good, man. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye out. This is developing on both sides of these stories. But y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments, man. Holler at your boy. Let me know how y'all feeling about this situation. Do they start Ashton Watkins? Do they start last Terrapoa? Do they keep things the same? Y'all let me know. Holler at your boy. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, I am Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Until next time, hey, we out.